Alrighty, here we go with another Games of the Year, but this time for 2023, you never would have guessed it. This is one of the first times where I felt like I needed to play more games than I have, and thus my options felt pretty limited. Despite that, I decided that for games that were released in 2023, my Game of the Year was The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think it's a rare feat for any sequel of a game to do what Tears of the Kingdom did for Breath of the Wild, and that's effectively provide improvements for an experience I originally felt was one of a kind. I had never played an open world game quite like Breath of the Wild, and somehow Tears of the Kingdom gave me a similar or better experience. It felt upgraded and fresh despite the various aspects I was interacting with. This was also coming from me changing up my strategy for playing the game, which resulted in me not getting constantly distracted at every little thing that I saw. I really enjoyed the new powers that they added and the new types of puzzle solving and critical thinking that could be done with them. One of those powers still baffles me to this day on a technical level, as it seems the world was built to restrict and allow its usage, yet the visual feedback is instantaneous. And even after using it, the result doesn't take that much time at all. Open world games definitely have a very stagnant position in the gaming sphere for the most part, but The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom really managed to give me a unique experience and hours of fun despite Breath of the Wild already existing. So that's why it's my game of the year for games that released in 2023. For my favorite game played in 2023, which includes anything and everything regardless of release date, was Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Disregarding the fact that I'm still confused how this game even exists, this is a classic example of my sequel mantra, give me more of the same. There were certainly some drastic changes in gameplay that was altered because of it, but in the end, the game still played the same way as its Kingdom Battle predecessor. It's also a fresh take on tactics games as a whole. It doesn't feel like it's trying to be another game. It feels like it's building something new on a traditional framework, and I appreciate the approach so much. The overall experience was just fun every step of the way as well. Adding sparks to the game created a nice customization avenue and even opened the door for some very overpowered scenarios to take advantage of. Many of the characters had specific niches that made them extremely strong on some missions, but less useful on others, and I thought that was cool. In the end, the gameplay was just super fun and I found very little to criticize for the game. For my most disappointing game played in 2023, it would have to be Terracotta. While there were other games that were very difficult to play, questionable at so many junctures, or just plain absolutely freaking ridiculous, Terracotta was a game that I had expectations for. I had played the demo and liked what I saw, so I waited for my opportunity to play the full game. And once it was in my hands, the one thing that took it over the edge was the enemies. In puzzle games, I like to survey what I'm given and develop a plan. Sometimes that involves trial and error, and other times I create a step-by-step -step process. For Terracotta, I found that process to be very difficult because I was constantly interrupted by enemies. It was very difficult to experiment or get a lay of the land because the enemies were so disruptive. In most instances, I felt like they were just there to be annoying rather than further the progression of the puzzle towards a solution or checkpoint. While I was hoping for a cool puzzle game with neat lore of the Terracotta army within its story, I just felt overwhelmed by enemy management while doing my best to enjoy the puzzles. In the end, I couldn't have fun, and that's why it was so disappointing for me. For honorable mentions on favorite games that I played this year, also with no restrictions and not in any particular order, there was Trails into Reverie. I went into this experience with a little salt and not a lot of patience. I exited the game being pleasantly surprised at the story structure, usage of characters, and mechanics. If Trails in a Reverie was a sign for future Trails games to come, I would feel pretty excited for those games. It re-established the pecking order for what characters I liked and which ones were busts, while also adding some nice twists and alterations to the gameplay. It wasn't perfect by any means, but the highs for the game were without a doubt among the highest points for the entire series. That is what helped this game stand out as much as it did, and I truly hope that future Trails games take after it. For my second honorable mention, it would have to be Mega Man X Command Mission. I admittedly wasn't completely sure what to expect when I played it, and what I got was an unintentionally hilarious game with cool battle systems. The reasons I enjoyed it so much were largely due to how seriously the game takes itself and how unserious I was taking it. There's just something about old school voice acting where sometimes it can be a parody of itself and for whatever reason, for this specific game, I just found it entertaining instead of lacking. 
Even though my namesake didn't prove to be very useful, I appreciated the unique take on turn-based combat and customization, and I had a ton of fun playing it. The last honorable mention I have is Ephemeral Fantasia, but not for the reasons I would typically praise a game for. This is a game that has a laundry list of problems and is definitely one of the most difficult games to recommend to anyone. That said, I went into this game because I heard it was one of the worst games of all time, and what I got was something much better than that. Don't get me wrong, it was frustrating and I was relieved to finally complete it, but somehow the fun moments of the game surpassed the moments I didn't enjoy. It was a game where I basically had to make my own fun and that combined with the constant theory crafting and experimentation, I developed a fun routine in a game that was otherwise troubled. By the end, I got a unique experience that I don't think I would have gotten from any other game, so I thought that was neat. When looking forward to 2024, I think I'll find myself playing a lot of the 2023 games that I didn't get around to yet. Still, if there's one anticipated game that I anxiously await for, it's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's just a simple matter of Final Fantasy VII Remake being a wonderful game that I enjoyed and me hoping for more of that. I definitely have confidence that the game will be exciting, so I definitely can't wait to play it. But that's all I got for my Games of the Year 2023. Thanks for watching, appreciate it, see you on the next video.